Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last lecture, we saw what is meant by a vector space. Uh, Let us recall that a vector space has four ingredients, one an arbitrary non-empty set, then a field F and the addition or a rule of combining two elements in V and what is known as scalar multiplication, a rule of combining an F element with a V element and then we had the rules for plus and plot. Together with this we get a vector space. We shall now look at some examples of vector spaces. The first simple example is the following. Since all our motivation for the definition of a vector space stems from our experience with R k, clearly R k is itself a vector space. So, R k which is the set of all want to call it column matrices such that x j belong to R and then we have this usual loss of addition etcetera. So, R k is a vector space and the field is R over R, the scalars we consider are R with the loss of plus and scalar multiplication as defined earlier. How did we define this scalar multiplications? We just when we say add, we said simply add the corresponding entries. When we said multiply as by a scalar, we meant multiply every entry by the scalar. Now, what was the 0 element of this vector space? for the 0 element, the 0 vector or the 0 matrix and for x, x 1, x 2, x k minus x is the negative is just minus x 1, minus x 2, etcetera. This we have seen already, these were the properties of R k which motivated us to give the abstract definition of R k. So, this is the first fundamental definition uh, example of a vector space. The second example is we replace the real numbers by the complex numbers. So, the real field is replaced by the complex field. So, we take V to be C k which is the set of all the vectors or all the column matrices x 1, x 2, x k where x j are complex numbers. Again addition is entry wise, scalar multiplication is entry wise. We will call this entry wise addition and entry wise scalar multiplication as usual addition and scalar multiplication. Then we take f to be c, then v is a vector space. over f that is c k is a vector space over c with the usual loss with the usual loss of addition and scalar multiplication. Again I repeat when we say usual law it means entry wise addition and entry wise scalar multiplication. In this vector space, the 0 vector 
is this theta k again which is 0 0 0 and for x x 1 x 2 x k the negative vector is minus x 1 minus x 2 minus x since x 1 x 2 x k are complex numbers minus x 1 minus x 2 minus x k is also a complex number and therefore, this vector we have defined minus x also belongs to C k. In general, we can start with any field f and look at f k. So, f is any field and look at f k which is the set of all x equal to x 1, x 2, x k where now x j's are from f. So, instead of f when we put f equal to r we are looking at r k when we put f equal to c we are looking at s c k in general we can take any field f and look at f k then again usual laws of addition what does that mean we add two elements in f k by adding the corresponding entries usual law of scalar multiplication that means we multiply alpha and x by multiplying every entry of x by alpha. Then f k is a vector space over f with the usual laws of addition and scalar multiplication. And again what is the v in this case is f k. So, what is the theta v? It is again theta k in this case 0 0 0 where now the 0 refers to the 0 element of the field f and for x in v minus x the negative is again minus x 1 minus x 2 minus x k. Again since x 1 x 2 x k are in the field f in the field every element has its negative and therefore, minus x 1 minus x 2 minus k belong to f. When we take f equal to r so, in this example if we take f equal to r we get r k the vector space r k when we get f equal to c when we take f equal to c we get the vector space c k. Let us look at another typical example which is a field which is different from all this. Let us take for example f to be the binary field z 2 what is this binary field z 2? It consists of 2 elements 0 1 where the addition is defined by the following table 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is 0 and multiplication in this field is defined as 0 into 0 is 0, 0 into 1 is 0, 1 into 0 is 1, 1 into 1 is 1. This is the simplest multiplication table that one can uh, remember. Now, with these operations of plus and into z 2 is a field. So, we are looking at the field z 2 plus and into. Now, in this field for example, what is minus 0? minus 0 is 0 itself and minus 1 is 1 itself because 1 plus 1 is 0 and therefore, 1 acts as the negative of 1 plus 1 is 0 here is 1 when I add it with 1 I get 0. So, 1 acts as the negative of 1. So, in this field every element is its own inverse. So, in is z 2 plus in 2 every element is its own negative.
now let us look at v to be this field 3 take k equal to 3. So, f k is now 3 what is this this is the collection of all x 1 x 2 x 3 3 by 1 matrices where x 1 x 2 x 3 are from the field z 2. That means, x 1 x 2 x 3 can be either 0 or 1. So, there are 2 choices for x 1 namely 0 and 1 and for every choice of x 1 there are 2 choices for x 2 namely 0 and 1 and for every choice of x 1 and x 2 there are 2 choices of x 3 namely 0 and 1. So, there are totally 2 into 2 into 2 8 possibilities. So, there are only 8 elements or 8 vectors in this in this collection V. What are these 8 vectors? So, actually Z 2 3 consists of these following vectors 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1. Now, this is all zeros these 3 are only 1 z 1 and remaining 2 zeros the 1 can be in the first place or in the second place or in the third place. Similarly, we can have 2 1s and 1 0 and finally, we can have all 1s. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 elements in this field in this z 2 3. Now, on this z 2 3 just like the addition in R induced an addition in R k the addition in z 2 induces an addition in z 2 3. So, <coughs> V equal to z 2 3 is a vector space over z 2 the field is z 2 with usual loss of addition and scalar multiplication. Now, what do we mean by usual loss we have to add entry wise when we add entry wise each entry is a field ele in uh, an element in the field z 2. So, it has to be added according to the z 2 addition loss. For example, if we add 1 0 1 and 0 1 1 according to this usual loss it should be 1 plus 0 0 plus 1 1 plus 1. Now, these pluses here refer to the plus in z 2, but in z 2 1 plus 0 is 1 0 plus 1 is 1, but 1 plus 1 is 0. So, this is what we meant by usual loss you have to add entry wise, but the entry additions are done according to the field loss. Similarly, there are only 2 scalar multiplications possible either multiplication by 0 or multiplication by 1 because the field has only 2 elements. When we multiply by 0 all the entries become 0 when we multiply by 1 all the entries remain the same. This is what is meant by saying that we are looking at usual loss of addition and scalar multiplication. So, in this field so, in this vector space z 2 3 over z 2 this is a vector space this is our v this is the field f and the loss of addition and multiplication scalar multiplication are there. So, this is the vector space what is the 0 element of this vector space it is obviously 0 0 0. Now, something tricky happens here if you take any x in the 
in Z23, its corresponding negative vector must be I must take minus x1. We have seen that in the field Z2, every element is its own negative. So, minus x1 will be x1 only, minus x2 will be x2 only, minus x3 will be x3 only. So, this is in this particular vector space, every vector is its own negative. For example, 1, 0, 1 plus itself. Since this should act as its negative, we must get 0, but what is it? 1 plus 1, 0 plus 0, 1 plus 1, but in this field 1 plus 1 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 0, 1 plus 1 is 0 and this is what theta v is. So, thus if this is a vector space which has only a finite number of vectors in it, 8 vectors and in this vector space every vector is its own negative. When we deal with vector spaces over finite fields, we get such very peculiar things which we are not familiar with when we are talking about our usual notions of vectors. Let us look at now some more examples. So, in general we have seen that f k is a vector space over f. Now, this takes care of the basic extension of the idea of R k. From R k we got the general notion of a vector space, from R k we went to C k, from C k we went to F k and these were the examples of the various F k's. Now, we will go to the notion of matrices. The next example we will look at is let us start with R and look at all m by n matrices whose entries are real numbers. So, these are all the matrix spaces, they are all matrices A i j where there are m rows and n columns and all the entries are real numbers. So, let us consider all the matrices real matrices with m rows and n columns and let us take f to be r. Now, we know how to add matrices again entry wise addition, we know how to multiply a matrix by a scalar every matrix is every entry in the matrix is multiplied by the scalar. We will call this the usual laws of addition and scalar multiplication. V is a vector space what is V R m cross n is a vector space over f what is f r with usual loss of addition and scalar multiplication of matrices. So, we have the vector space of real matrices. What is the 0 element of this vector space? It is the 0 matrix with m rows and n columns we will use this. So, in this vector space the 0 element is the 0 matrix and if A is a matrix in this vector space, then what is minus A? Minus A is a matrix obtained from A by taking the negative of each element. So, it is minus A i j 1 less than equal to i less than equal to m 1 less than equal to j less than equal to m. So, we have the vector space of all m by n real matrices. In particular, if we take m equal to n, we get the vector space of all square matrices. So, R n squared is the vector space of all n by n real matrices 
bow over the field R. Analogously, just like we took R here, we can take complex numbers. So, we have C m cross n, the set of all complex m by n matrices is a vector space over the field where field is complex numbers. Again, what is the 0 element of this vector space? It is the 0 m by n matrix and the negative of a matrix is just minus a i j as before. In general, we can take any f and look at all m by n matrices whose entries are from the field f. So, take a field f like we could have taken z 2. So, we will be talking about binary matrices, matrices with whose entries are only in 0 and 1. So, we take any field f, consider all m by n matrices over f and then this is a vector space over f. Again, when we say with usual laws, that means we must add the matrices by adding corresponding entries. When we add corresponding entries, that must be according to the rule of addition in the field f. So, it is usual loss of addition and scalar multiplication. Once again, in this vector space, the 0 vector is the 0 m by n matrix and minus a is minus a i j, where the minus a i j has to be taken as per the negative rule in the field f. And in general, we can have the rectangular uh, the from the rectangular to the square matrices is the vector space of all n by n matrices over the field f. So, first we had the vector space of k by 1 all the entries from a field f, then we had the vector space of all matrices m by n where the entries are from a field. The field can be R the set of real numbers, the field can be C the field of complex numbers or the field f can be any general field. So, now we look at another set of examples, useful examples. Let us now consider any set S. So, S is an arbitrary set S and let us consider the set of real numbers. So, we have an arbitrary non-empty set S and we have the set of real numbers. What is meant by a function from S to R? by a function f from s to r, we mean a rule which associates with every number s an element which is a real number f s. So, with each element s in s, a real number f s is associated. Such a rule of association is called a function from s to r. So, let us take a function from s to r. And suppose I have another function which associates g s. So, in other words, we have a function f which associates the value f of s with an element s, and g, of, g is another function which associates the value g of s with s. Now, f s is in R. Note that the value of the function is in R the value of the function g is in r. Therefore, f s is a real number, g s is a real number. So, we can add f s and g s. So, we will get when we add f s and g s, we will get f s plus g s and that is also a 
real number. So, we have added the real number f s and the real number g s. Now, we can think of a new function which associates with s the value f plus f s plus g s we call that as the function f plus g. So, if we have two functions from s and r we have this sum function and since we are adding the value at each point to get the new function we call this addition of functions as point wise addition. This is what is meant by point wise addition of functions that is at each point the value of the functions are added. So, we now know how to add two functions from S to R. Similarly, let us take S and let us take R the real numbers. Again suppose I have a function f which with each s associates the value f of s. Now, f of s is a real number and suppose I choose any real number alpha I can multiply f of s and alpha because alpha is a real number and f of s is a real number and the result of the product is again a real number because the product of two real numbers is real number. Now, we can think of a new function which associates with each s the value alpha times f s we call it the function alpha f. This gives us the scalar multiplication of functions. This is again point wise multiplication. So, addition of functions is defined as point wise addition and we have point wise scalar at each point the value is multiplied by the scalar. So, now we know how to add functions and scalar multiply. So, now we consider let S be any set any non empty set let us denote and so that is our V let us take f the field to start with the real numbers and let us take the v to be the set of all functions which map s to r. We will actually denote this by f s r. So, this f says collection of all functions what is the domain s and where do they end up with what is the value taken it is a real number. So, it is the collection of all functions from S to R. So, we have now the set V, we have the field do we have the plus well if you take two functions we have seen what is meant by addition point wise addition. So, the point wise addition so what is the definition F belongs g belongs to f s r f plus g by definition is a function its value at any point is defined to be value of f at s plus value of g at s. So, we have the addition operation and we have the scalar multiplication point wise point wise scalar multiplication what does that mean we have alpha in r f in g f in f s r then alpha f is the function by definition its value at any point s is alpha times f of Yes. So, we have the set V, now we have the set V, the field F, the set V is the collection of all functions from S to R, real valued functions on the set S, and the field is the field of real numbers. Addition of functions is point wise addition, scalar multiplication is point wise scalar 
multiplication. Now, with these laws of addition and scalar multiplication, F s r is a vector space over r. What is the 0 element of this vector space? It must be an element of v therefore, it must be a function from s to r which function theta is that function from s to r defined as at each point s it takes the value 0 that is the 0 element of this vector space or the 0 vector of this vector space. Now, if f belongs to f s r what is minus f. Now, since f belongs to f s r we want minus f also to belong to f s r because the negative of anything in v in a vector space must be back in the vector space. So, minus f must be a function. So, minus f is that function which is defined as minus f at any point s yes, its value is take f s value and take the negative of that. The value of f is given because f is in given we are trying to find the negative of f. The moment you know f at any point evaluates its value that is a real number take the negative of that real number and therefore, you get another real number. So, that real number is called the, the minus f of s it is called the value of the function minus f at the point s. So, we have the collection the vector space of all functions from s to r. Let us take look at some very specific examples in this suppose I take s to be a finite set s 1 s 2 say s k. Suppose I take f to be a fine s to be a finite set and I look at f s r. Now, what do we mean by a f in f s r? So, if I have a function f which is in s r that means f is a function from s to r if f is a function from s to r f will assign a real number to each element in s therefore, f is will assign a real number to s 1 f will assign a real number to s 2 and f will assign a real number to s k. So, we will have f s 1 f s 2 etcetera f s k will all be real numbers and therefore, they are k real numbers. So, we can form the usual k row matrix one column f s k. So, essentially we see that these are such a function can be identified with an element in r k. So, basically therefore, when you have s in as a finite set s 1, s 2, s k the f s r the collection of all functions from s to r is essentially the collection r k. We will see the more about more in uh, detail about this such sort of identifications at a later time, but basically therefore, f s r in this case can be identified. We will talk about this identification in more detail later with r k. At least we see it is such a function is only an element of r k in disguise. Ne next let us look at another simple version instead of 
the finite set let us look at a discrete sequence S1, S2, S3 etcetera. So, we have now an infinite sequence S1, S2, S3. Now, look at the set of all functions from S to R. What does this mean? This means if f belongs to f s r, this means that f assigns f is a function of mapping s to r, which means f assigns a real number with s 1, again f assigns a real number with s 2, a real number with s 3 and so on and therefore, we get f s 1, f s 2 etcetera real numbers. Thus, we get a sequence of real numbers. Therefore, we get a sequence, infinite sequence of real numbers. And therefore, in this case when s is equal to s 1, s 2 etcetera an infinite sequence, the f s r is basically identified with sequences of real numbers. So, thus when we are talking about R k, thus when we are talking about R k, we are really talking about in other words functions from a finite set S 1, S 2, S k to real numbers. And similarly, when we are talking about infinite sequences of real numbers, we are in other words talking about a functions from an infinite set, infinite sequence S 1, S 2, S 3 to the real numbers. So, these functions and these uh, vectors uh, column vectors can be identified with each other. Now, let us take S to be an interval on the real line. This interval can be a finite interval or the full real line, semi infinite, closed, open, whatever type. So, let i be some interval on the real line and let us take the collection of all functions from i to r. So, this is the collection of all functions which with each point in the interval i associate a real number. Thus, we have the collection of real valued functions in R. Now, it for example, we may take i to be the interval for example, 0 to pi or i to be 0 t. Now, these are the types of functions we will be looking at when we talk about periodic functions and Fourier series. We may think of i as minus infinity to infinity the whole real line. These are the type of functions which we will be talking about when we talk about Fourier transforms and so different types of intervals will produce different types of situations which will be useful to us in our applications. Now, among these functions which are mapping i to r, there are some of very particular interest. In all the above examples, we can replace r by s. So, we can write similarly let s be any set, any non empty set. Then look at 
f s c the collection of all functions which map from s to c the collection of all functions from s to c then if the laws of addition and scalar multiplication are usual again point wise the values are added point wise the collection of all these functions is a vector space over c with the usual laws of addition in scalar multiplication. So, we have the collection of all uh, real valued functions, we have the collection of all continuous uh, complex valued functions. The domain S can be a finite set or an infinite sequence or a continuum like an interval on the real line. Now, among these class of functions there are some special ones which are very useful. Now, let us look at the situation where we have S to be an infinite sequence S 1, S 2, S 3 and then let us look at F S R. F S R is the set of all functions from S to R, R C. So, in order to keep both options available for us, let us now write F, where F is equal to R or F is equal to C. So, either we consider real valued functions on S or real val complex valued functions on S, where S is an infinite sequence of points S 1, S 2, S 3 an infinite set, but it is a sequence the elements can be arranged in the form of a sequence. For example, you can think of S at the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 the set of all positive integers. Now, consider that uh, set S and the set of all real valued or complex valued functions in this. Now, if you take any function f in S, any function in f s r, so we have f mapping s to f. So, either a real valued function or a complex valued function, take any such function corresponding to this, we get the values f s 1 f s 2 etcetera, which is a sequence of real or complex numbers depending on whether we take f is equal to r or f is equal to c. Now, what we do is we look at the absolute values of this. Now, if f is a real valued function f s 1, f s 2, f s 3 are real numbers but they can be positive or negative real numbers, but once we take modulus we get only non negative real numbers. If f is a complex valued function f s 1, f s 2, f s 3 will be complex numbers, but when we take the modulus again we get to complex valued um, or non negative real numbers. Now, let us add all this. We get summation say j equal to 1 to infinity mod f j s j. Now, this sum may be finite or infinite because we have now a infinite series of non negative terms. The infinite series may or may not converge it may diverge to plus infinity. So, we would like to look at functions where this sum is under control. So, we are going to look at all those function. So, this may be less than infinity 
or it may be equal to plus infinity. So, we are going to look at all those functions which are under control that it is less than infinity. So, we are going to look at all those functions from S to F where again a remind that F can be R or C such that summation j equal to 1 to infinity mod F S j is less than infinity. The sum is the sum of the absolute values is under control ok it is under phi it is finite. So, consider the set of all functions this is called L 1 we will use the little l 1 let me write this carefully this is now denoted by l 1 s to r l 1 s to r. So, this is the space l 1 s to r. So, it is not all functions from s to r among the functions from s to r we only choose those functions for which the sum is finite. For example, if we take f mapping s to r or f to f defined as f s j is equal to 1 by j square. The value taken at the point s j is the square of the index j reciprocal of that. So, now what is mod f j? Then this implies mod f j is just 1 by mod j square j may be j is real. So, it is just 1 by j square. So, what is mod f s j all added up it is this series and we know that this series converges and therefore, it is less than infinity and therefore, this function belongs to L 1 s r. On the other hand If we take f mapping s to r as f of s j is 1 by j, then mod f s j is again 1 by j, j is an integer and therefore, summation mod f s j j equal to 1 to infinity is summation j equal to 1 to infinity 1 by j which diverges to plus infinity and therefore, this if f is not or f let us take a general f, f can be real or uh, complex. So, therefore, we have some f's in mapping from s to r are in this l 1, some f's which are not uh, mapping from s to r not in this l 1. This l 1 consists of all those functions which are from s to r for which this total sum in absolute value is in uh, control it is finite. With this notation then l 1 s f we can verify is a vector space over f. So, the set of all real valued functions on s for which the sum is finite is a vector space over r. The set of all complex valued functions for which the sum is finite is a vector space over the field of complex numbers. Analogously, Instead of asking summation mod f s j j equal to 1 to infinity 
to be finite, we can look at f for which summation j equal to 1 to infinity mod f s j squared is finite. So, we denote this by L 2 s r remember s is our discrete infinite set s 1, s 2, s 3 etcetera to be all those functions mapping from s to r for which this sum mod f s j squared is finite. For example, we had if f mapping s to r is such that f s j equal to 1 by j, then f was not in L 1 s r, but now this function is such that summation mod f s j squared j equal to 1 to infinity is summation j equal to 1 to infinity 1 by j squared because f s j is 1 by s j and this we know is a convergent series. Therefore, this f belongs to L 2 s r whereas, and f does not belong to L 1 s r. So, these are two different objects L 1 s r and L 2 s r are two different objects. Similarly, you can replace r by c we get the complex functions. So, therefore, L 2 s f where f is r or c is a vector space over L 2 is a vector space over f with the usual laws of addition because we know how to add functions, we know how to multiply a function by a scalar, these are all point wise and with that this. So, these are functions from S to f which have special properties. First we considered all functions from S to f that was a vector space over f, then we considered all functions over S from S to f for which the summation mod f s j is finite and we got L 1 s f. Then we considered all functions from S to F for which summation mod F S j squared is finite and we got the L 2 S. Similarly, let us look at L 1. Similarly, first thing is look at uh, any interval i in R. and then look at all functions from i to r or you look at any interval in r or look at all functions from i to c. So, either real valued functions on the interval i or the complex valued functions on the interval i. Then this is a vector space over r this is a vector space over C. Just like we considered special functions above where the sum was finite or the sum of the squares was finite, here we can consider functions for which the integral of the absolute value of f is finite and the integral of the absolute value of f squared is finite. So, we get L 1 s to r to be the set of all functions from S to R, where S is now the interval i such that integral mod of f t d t is well defined and is finite. Of course, we must make sure that the integral is finite. We will not worry about giving formal definitions of the integral at this stage. Similarly, L 2 S R when S is the interval is the set of all f from S to R such that integral i 
mod f t square d t is pi. These are some of the important vector spaces of functions. We shall see some more vector spaces of functions as examples in the next class. Thank you.